Ladies and gentlemen, in the junior division from the United States, Brendan Zhang. And his opponent from Japan, Fuko Nakamichi. Rotom washing machine, Heatran, Cresselia, and Escavalier. Game two of the 2013 Junior World Video Game Championships. Brendan Zhang at the bottom of your screen is up 1-0. Fuko Nakamichi hoping to come back in this second game of a potential three-game set. Will be on the top of your screen. Leads Weavile Thunderous. Thinks that everything was right about that lead. And looks like Brendan also agrees. My lead was just as good for Celia and Rotom Washing Machine back on the field. I'm always a little surprised to see the same leads from the losing trainer, especially when a deficit was big like that. But perhaps she thinks she has a different plan this time. Uh, even though she's using the same Pokemon, maybe she'll differentiate her strategy a little bit. Uh, we only saw a few moves from both of these Pokemon last game, so there's still more tricks she might have that could improve this matchup for her a little bit. And the, the final score was 3-0 last game, but there were a lot of Pokemon just barely hanging on at the end of that. So it is possible that if Fuko is able to play her cards right this, ter this time around, she will still be able to come out on top. And we haven't seen the, the back Pokemon, too. She could still have cha made changes back there, and so could Brendan, of course. Uh, Weavile does go for that standard fake-out opening, is going to make sure that Rotom Washing Machine cannot, cannot move this turn. As Swagger comes out from Thunderous Incarnate onto that Cresselia, Swagger... Uh, a move that we saw quite a bit of yesterday is going to raise Cresselia's attack and cause it to be confused. And again, this is why Thunderous is so feared. Rotom is, is flinched and unable to move thanks to that fake out from Weavile as Cresselia is confused and is going to use the Ice Beam. Does go through the confusion and is able to hit Thunderous with that Ice Beam. Does activate the Yachi Berry we saw last time. Uh, dealing just a little bit of damage, but when you're going up against a Pokemon like Thunderous, that's going to just try and paralyze you and confuse you. Every little bit of damage counts. Yeah, and getting rid of the berry is important too. You know, then every Ice Beam after this one will do more damage. So Cresselia is probably just going to try to keep whittling away at Thunderous and to get it out of the way here. Um, I do hope that Brendan, if he wants to deal with Thunderous, I think it's important for him to do what he did the first game and try to weaken it quickly rather than just slowly whittling it down. Uh, that was kind of the pitfall his brother ran into. Mm -hmm. And apparently Thunder Wave Swagger is the patented anti zang tactic, so hopefully <laughs> Brendan can figure a way around it. Yeah, interestingly enough, I'm surprised that Fuko is going with the Swagger lead, uh, considering that we already saw Kinkelder in the back with Lumberry. Kinkelder would like nothing more than to eat a Swagger and activate that Lumberry to cure the confusion and get that free attack boost. That's a really great tool on Brendan's side there. Just to make it a little more risky to use the Swagger. You can't just use the move indiscriminately or it might end up helping your opponent. And I think it's really clever of him to have that tool available. And uh, we see Rotom coming back for that Kunkelder, possibly hoping to get that Swagger off onto Kunkelder from Fuko's Thunderous there. Kunkelder out on the field now, beat up on the way from Weavile. We already saw that not dealing a whole lot of damage to Cresselia uh, last game, but a little bit more with that critical hit, bringing it down to about half HP, a little bit a little bit under half, but it will activate the Citrus Berry, which will heal Cresselia back up nicely, back above half HP there. Dealing quite a bit more damage this time around thanks to that critical hit and the four times that it hit. And the Thunder coming out from that Thunderous that Kinkelder is able to avoid. Doesn't get the free Swagger, but does not take any damage this turn. Cresselia trying to fight through that confusion. Does not succeed this time. Does hit itself, dealing just a little bit of damage, but more importantly, not being able to move. It makes sense to see Thunder from Thunderous there. Uh, it doesn't work out this time, but it does have a Politoed on the team, which makes the Thunder 100% accurate, so it makes sense that it has it rather than a move like Thunderbolt that just uh, hasn't had the chance to set up yet, so a little risky for now. And there's Aaron Zhang, uh, Brendan's older brother, on the screen just a second ago, uh, cheering on his little brother in this finals. Kinkelder out on the field now, doesn't take any status moves, actually. Now still has the Lumberry and is going to put immense pressure on that Thunderous with uh, an Ice Punch if it has it. Yeah, it's a little riskier for Thunderous to try to spam status moves now. Uh, we've already seen the Lumberry and Kinkelder, so we know it can block it once. And Thunderous probably doesn't want to hang around here and avoid or risk getting knocked out here because I think that Thunder Wave Swagger combination is a really important way for uh, Fuko to deal with Rotom and Cresselia, so losing Thunderous early can make it really difficult to battle back. Yeah, definitely a great way to pressure that Thunderous and make sure it's not getting any free turns off to paralyze and confuse 
Brendan's team, just having that offensive pressure from Kinkelder with that Lumberry. Uh, great adjustment there. Rotom comes back out as the Thunder Wave comes out from the Thunderous, is going to target the Kinkelder, blow the Lumberry, uh, but it will give Kinkelder a free shot at Thunderous if it chooses to take it. As we see the Paralysis coming out and the Lumberry being consumed. Again, that Lumberry, for my money, possibly the best item in the game just because of the threat of Thunderous. Beat up comes back out from the Weavile. Is still going to deal some damage to Rotom, but as we saw before, beat up not the strongest attack. Uh, mostly for that utility against the Verizian. And the Ice Punch does come out from Conkelder. Is going to target the Thunderous. Will it be enough to KO from pretty reasonably healthy? It looks like it will be. The super effective Ice Punch does get the KO on Thunderous and a huge threat out of the way for Brendan. Yeah, we're just talking about how important of a knockout that would be for him to get, and he's able to get it. So Thunderous no longer around to deal with Rotom and Cresselia, both of which still have a decent amount of health left. So they're going to be big for the rest of this match. And both of which are really strong against the Politoed that just came out on the field here. Uh, we already saw that Politoed can force some switches with Parish Song, but without any way to trap the Pokemon in, uh, Parish Song loses quite a bit of its utility. Uh, speaking of losing utility, one of the other drawbacks of beat up is that it does damage based on the amount of Pokemon you still have remaining on your side. So by getting that, that knockout on Thunderous, not only has Brendan removed a threat from the other team, but he's also reduced the damage that Weevil can do with its dark type attacks. Yeah, definitely a great thing for that Cresselia in the back. And we do see Politoed protecting itself, does not want to be the target of any damage here as the beat up does come back out from the Weavile onto Rotom, just trying to chip that down correctly identifying that Rotom is the biggest threat to Politoed right now. Uh, that electric typing going to be super effective against the water type. But Rotom, showing some of his tricks, is going to take a little cat nap, go to sleep, heal off all of that damage, and presumably wake right up. A really great move there. He predicts that Politoed isn't just going to leave himself available to be hit by electric type attacks, and uses the move as intelligently as he could there and heals up, but putting him in a much better situation, especially without Thunderous around to help weaken Rotom a second time. It's going to be really difficult to knock it out. Yep, and there is that Chesto Berry waking it back up as Kinkelder does try to get the damage done onto Politoed into the Protect. So Politoed does avoid some damage, but more importantly, Rotom is healthy again. Yeah, one good play by both sides that turn, but Brendan's probably a little bit happier there since in addition to not taking any damage, he healed a bunch off. Yeah, and still has immense offensive pressure with both Kinkelder and Rotom being able to take out both of Fuko's Pokemon on the opposite field there. Uh, looks like a very good position for Brendan to be in. Yeah, really challenging if you're Fuko here. You've got to find a way to make a switch to get yourself in a better position because you've got both of your Pokemon fighting against counters. And while Kinkelder is slower than Weevil, it does have the option of Mach Punch, so even that's not really the case. Fuko with a very gutsy play, leaving that Weavile in against the Kinkelder. Uh, hoping that Kinkelder isn't going to fight back. Gets the Ice Punch off as the Thunderbolt does connect with Politoed this time, dealing over half HP there. Uh, but Politoed will just recover some of that back off with the Citrus Berry. As you can see, Politoed becoming a little bit healthier there. And it looks like the Scald is coming out from Politoed, also going to target that Kinkelder, trying to get that immense threat off of the field and possibly get a burn with that Scald there. As you can see, it does not get the burn and does not deal enough damage. And the Drain Punch does come out once again to deal good damage to that Politoed and also heal off that Kinkelder. Politoed just barely hanging on with that red bar there. A smart play by Brendan there to hit the Politoed with both of his attacks. Uh, since it used Protect in the previous turn, it's much less likely to use Protect this turn. So by putting both of his attacks there, he's almost guaranteeing that he's going to get some damage. And when he's already got a lead like this, you know, all he's got to do is make sure he's making you know, even trades to continue through the game. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Brendan has a pretty commanding lead, but it's very easy on a single turn if you, as we mentioned before, if you waste a turn then you can be in trouble. Conkelder does go for the Mach Punch, does hit that Weavile, that priority Mach Punch, making sure that Conkelder, very slow, does get a chance to move first, does get the Focus Sash out of Weavile as it hangs on by a thread with that Focus Sash at 1 HP. The Ice Punch does come back out, trying to get Conkelder off the field because we've already just seen how much damage that Mach Punch can do. It isn't going to be quite enough. Thunderbolt comes out onto the Weavile. Correct prediction again from Brendan. Double targets the Weavile, gets the KO, and a very, very good position. Brendan has been making perfect plays this entire game. Yeah, he's been absolutely brilliant this game. I mean, he's been favorite to win this tournament for years, and he's showing why this game. Like, absolutely amazing performance in this series. Yeah, and Scizor out on the field now. 
Puko's last best hope against this Rotom and this Conkeldor. Conkeldor very low. We already saw that Aerial Ace coming out of the Scizor. Won't want to take any rain-boosted Hydro Pumps from that washing machine, though. Yeah, also valuable for Scissor here is that it is Bullet Punch, a priority move. So it makes it more diff difficult for Conkeldor just to use a Mach Punch on its way out and take out Palatoad here. Um, it's important for Fuko to stop that. It's already a 4-2 advantage for Brendan, and if Palatoad goes down without doing anything, it's going to be an almost insurmountable lead. Yep, definitely the case there, as we can see. Uh, Fuko taking all of the time allotted for her to make this decision. Uh, possibly the game-deciding turn here. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's the mark of a smart player to take your time on a turn like this. I think a lot of players make the mistake of rushing big decisions like this, but you know, this is your season. This is your chance at winning Worlds. You've got to do everything you can to make sure you're making the best decision you can make. And Conkelder is going to detect, not going to let any damage be dealt to it. It wants to stick around with that 26 red blinking HP with that, uh, the, uh, you're about to faint music playing. The Conkelder does protect itself from the bullet punch. Will-O-Wisp does hit! Brendan's Rotom, apparently better trained than Aaron on your screen there, does get the burn onto Scizor, who will now have to deal with reduced attack as well as the damage over time. Uh, Politoed does manage to deal some damage back to that Rotom. Uh, good damage there for the not very effective Scald. Oh, the critical <laughs> hit, there we go. And the, the burn from the Scald there. Uh, those are the kind of plays that Fuko will need to get back in this game. Yeah, a big turn for her there. Um, ends up doing about triple the amount of damage she probably expected to do, but the burn on Scissor is a big deal. With only two Pokemon left and Palatoid at such low health, uh, she's really got limited time to try to close this game out here. She's got to be really careful about how she does this. Uh, Scissor can only survive uh, uh, six or seven turns, even if it's being ignored here. And, you know, Palatoid, pretty much one hit from anything, will finish it off. So she needs to be very careful. In addition, the burn reduces Scissor's damage, which is going to make it even harder for them to come back unless she gets some more critical hits, which ignore that burn. And we see the bullet punch from that Scizor trying to get the mock punch threat out of the way. Does manage to get the KO through the burn. Uh, Conkelder is going to faint, but it leaves Rotom up to Thunderbolt, the Politoed. Politoed is going to go down, and that's another source of damage out of the way, and it's going to be up to Fuko's Scizor to bring it back home. Up to a 3-1 advantage for Brendan now. He only needs this game. He's up 1-0 in the series already. So if he can find a way to knock out Scissor, who's burned and slowly its health is going down, he will become the world champion. He's been working at this for years. Two top four finishes in the last two years. This could finally be his year. Two top four finishes, countless regionals, championships, countless national championships. It, it, he's in a phenomenal position to take home his first world championships here. As the Scavalier comes out, to threaten that Scizor as well. The burn on the Scizor, the burn on the Rotom. Uh, really good position for Brendan. And, you know, he's been working at this, as you said, for years. Uh, you have to imagine that his hands are shaking. Hopefully he's able to select the right moves. Yeah, you've got to imagine. You can taste it now. Only one Pokemon on the other side. It's burned. He's got his Scavalier out, who usually wins that 1v1. Uh, he's got to be excited now. Especially with Rotom able to connect with that Thunderbolt. Going to deal extra damage to that Scizor, making sure that even with the burn that he won't be able to survive much longer. Aerial Ace onto the Escavalier is going to deal a little bit of damage, but thanks to that burn, not enough. The X Scizor comes out onto Scizor. It's going to deal an not enough damage for the KO, but the burn damage will be enough, and Scizor is going to fade, and Brendan Zhang of the United States of America will defeat Fuko Nakamichi and become our first 2013 world champion in the junior division. Congratulations, Brendan. I just love how it brings like so many different types of people and you get to meet so many different people. Uh, I like the competitive scene. I like the, the strategy and I've made a lot of friends through it. I just like all the Pokemon and, uh, and their designs. It's got a good community, so that keeps me playing. Because it's the best thing ever. I just like that it brings all my friends together and we hang out and have a great time. I like that it's a strategy game and it's really fun to play. The people, actually. It's very fun. There's a lot of friends here. It's really fun to open packs and it's really fun to win, too. Just recently, my friend got me into playing the TCG and here I am and I'm just loving it. Love Pokemon. I play Pokemon because it is amazing and the fact that there's so many different types of creatures, it is wonderful. And I grew up with it. Best childhood ever. You get to know people, really nice people in your area, and it's just kind of a relaxing thing to do. 
I like to play Pokemon because you have to think and there are so many possibilities. Ever since first game came out it looked very interesting and I've loved it. Grew up with Pokemon. The characters are all awesome. I love the little creatures, especially Espeon and Reggie <laughs> Thanks so much, Evan. As always, what an exciting match we just saw, but we've got two Americans kicking it off for that crown of Pokemon World Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Hayden McHavish! And his opponent, Ben Hickey! Back up a champ, which also that uh, would have led to a much better situation for him. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a damage roll thing. Uh, maybe he just didn't get a chance to do that in the previous best of three. But he should have all the information he needs to be in a better position this time. And maybe approach the beginning of this game a little bit differently. Uh, uh, Rhyperior was big, though. So yeah. he just needs to find a way to give Rhyperior enough help that it can actually finish the game out this time. All right, and here we go into game two of this best of three set. Ben on the top, Ben Hickey on the top of your screen with Hydreigon and the Cresselia. This could be his final game. These are the Pokemon he is choosing to lead with. And Hayden McTavish on the bottom, up 1-0. If he wins this one, he will be our senior champion with, the, the, with Pat Funduras and the Machamp, Machamp making a return appearance. Yeah, it wouldn't be too bad to have led Metagross this game, but I do like the adjustment. I think this is a much safer combination of leads with Cresselia and Hydreigon on Ben's side. And you kind of have to play it safe when you're down in a best of three. That's one of the disadvantages of falling behind in a series. You can't take the big risks at quite the same level when one wrong move will end the series for you. Whereas, uh, Hayden can open it up a little bit more. Like, if he wants to take a few risks, he can get away with it here. You know, if he loses the game, you know, it's not that huge of a deal. He still has a third chance. Whereas, if he makes a big play to take the game, it wins him the championship. It's a much, much more challenging position to play from behind. And I think you'll probably see a little more conservative of a game from Ben this time. Yeah, Hayden will definitely want to make sure that he keeps the momentum up. Retreats the Machamp in favor of the Scizor, which is going to love going up against Hydreigon and the Cresselia. Uh, we'll have to watch out if there is any, there are any Fire-type attacks, though. The Thunder Wave comes out, going to make sure that there's no risk of that, cutting the speed of that Hydreigon, and going to potentially make sure that that Hydreigon is unable to attack. The Earth Power comes out from Hydreigon, is going to target the Scizor, doing better damage than that Draco Meteor would have been. Uh, probably a good prediction there. Doesn't want to also drop his special attack. The Life Orb taking a little bit of the HP there. And the Psy Shot coming out, double targeting that Machamp slot. Definitely wanted to get rid of that one early. Is going to deal some damage to Scizor, putting Scizor in a pretty bad situation already. But with the Paralysis, Hydreigon's not going to be able to deal too much damage. Yeah, Scizor's still in a decent position. Uh, obviously, it wasn't super excited about coming in and having to take most of its health and damage here, but Cresselia still won't be able to knock it out, and now that it's faster than Hydreigon because of the paralysis, it can still get the knockout there. Uh, it's interesting, too, to see how Earth Power, uh, as most of the spectators probably expect, uh, from seeing Earth Power there, it doesn't have a fire move. Uh, it doesn't really need one anymore, since the uh, Scissor would easily be knocked out by Earth Power at this point, but if he was predicting that Scissor switch in, he didn't have the fire move to cash in on it. Uh, still the best move he could have used on the switch, though, so a good play, but limited by his own lack of uh, fire move here. And even though Hydreigon is paralyzed, and you know, we've already seen Trick Room come out once, uh, still a good position there. The Bug Bite is going to target the Cresselia, uh, possibly trying to heal Scizor back up a little bit. Going to go ahead and deal a lot of damage to that Cresselia, over half, about 60%. Is going to steal the Citrus Berry also and eat it to heal up a little bit of health there. We'll be close to see if that's going to be enough to get it uh, past the Earth Power coming in from Hydreigon. Uh, the Ice Beam is going to come out onto Thunderous. Not going to set up Trick Room, just going to use the Ice Beam and possibly break that substitute that Thunderous put up. It will be enough to break the substitute. Now Thunderous is open to an attack. Uh, does waste that turn, basically, though. But Hydreigon is going to be able to use the Earth Power onto Scizor, and it's going to be close to see how much damage this does. You can see the Molten uh, Earth going, causing that HP to drop, and Scizor barely survives at 19 HP. Uh, very close. That Citrus Berry steal, huge for Scizor there. Yeah, really clever use of Bug Bite there. Uh, most people just use Bug Bite on Scizor because, you know, it's the best, it's the highest damage bug move you can use on Scizor and the most accurate. But it does have that awesome extra property. Uh, Scizor boosts low power moves with its ability Technician, which lets it use some moves that normally aren't the best, just like uh, Machamp's No Guard does. And Bug Bite's one of those moves. Normally it's only 60 base power. Um, so, but the, you know, the advantage you get for that lowered base powder is that you can eat berries your opponent's holding. 
So instead of Cresselia getting to heal up, Scissor did there, and it was incredibly huge. Now uh, we mentioned before, Hydreigon doesn't have the fire move, which most Hydreigon do, and it's probably really wishing it had it now, since it would have had, it would have basically knocked Scissor out twice, and instead it has knocked Scissor out zero times. Yeah, huge play there by Hayden to make sure that Scissor stayed reasonably healthy there. Hydreigon is going to go for the protect, hoping to waste a turn on that Scizor, possibly bug biting it this turn. The Thunderbolt does come out onto the Cresselia, is going to deal some damage, not enough to get the KO. The bug bite does go into the protect. Did Cresselia trick room? No, it went for the Psy Shock, and it's going to target that Scizor again. Possibly enough to get that last little sliver of health. Yes, does finally get the Scizor knocked out. And no Citrus Berry this time, but still a great showing by the Scizor there. Did a bunch of damage, and in spite of switching in in a really unfavorable situation, it was able to keep the damage relatively even and keep the game close. Yeah, good, good work by that Scizor. It uh, did not go down without a fight, and definitely put Hayden in a very good position for the remainder of the game, especially with that Cresselia at such low health. If he had brought Rhyperior, I would have thought that he would want to go for the Trick Room there, but not going for that, you have to wonder if he brought it at all. Yeah, I'd expect you're right there. I think that's a tell that Rhyperior probably isn't available, or that he didn't think it was safe to Trick Room. Mm -hmm. uh, Machamp could be one of the reasons for that, uh, who we see here, and Machamp's got to be pretty excited by the paralysis too. Uh, I was kind of expecting that Scissor would get a chance to bug bite that Hydreigon while it was paralyzed, but it's okay, there's another Pokemon with a super effective <laughs> attack on Hydreigon, uh, which is kind of odd. One of the reasons Hydreigon is good is because its typing is usually better than its alternatives like Latios, but it's certainly not looking like it in this battle. Yeah, and Thunderous with that Thunderbolt, we already saw deal good damage to that Cresselia, is going to be enough to take out the Cresselia this turn. Cresselia does faint, and Machamp is going to have open season on Hydreigon, is going to use that dynamic punch, that powerful fighting type attack on the dark type Hydreigon is going to be more than enough to get the KO on the paral paralyzed Hydreigon. And now Hayden takes a huge lead, and now it's up to Ben's last two Pokemon to get them back in the game and force a game three. It's looking a little familiar here, right? We're again in this 3-2 situation. Uh, it's a little different than last time. Uh, Trick Room was the major factor last time, whereas this time we don't even know what Pokemon we're about to see. But a tough spot to be in again, uh, but far from, you know, unrecoverable. Yeah, and as we see, he did not decide to go with that heavy Trick Room mode as Ludicolo comes out, but Rhyperior is still on the field as well. Uh, but still, now that it's so slow, not the best position for Rhyperior to be on, especially with that Machamp out. Yeah, a rough spot for it. Uh, fake out pressure from Ludicolo will help out here. But uh, like you mentioned before, I would have expected the Trick Room for Rhyperior. I'm a little surprised that we didn't see it before. And Rhyperior's going to have a rough go of it now. It's got to deal with a faster Machamp. And you know, Thunderous is here to at least cause problems for Ludicolo, though I can't imagine it'll be too big of a deal. Uh, one thing that's great about having Thunderous out right now is that the advantage of Rhyperior is that while like, we saw Escavalier and Kinkelder in some other games where they're like the slow, physical, single-target attackers, Rhyperior is good because it's a spread damage Pokemon. It's got both Rock Slide and Earthquake that hit both targets. But uh, Thunderous is weak to one and resistant to the other, and Machamp is resistant to Rock Slide, which is the spread move that Thunderous is weak to. So there's a problem with both of the moves here. Yeah, definitely a good position for Hayden there. Uh, very synergistic for the, for the Thunderous and the Machamp. I never thought I would say that. <laughs> Ludicolo is going to use Protect, doesn't want to let doesn't want to take any free damage from that Thunderous as Thunderbolts. Machamp also protecting, assuming the fake out was coming, I'm sure. And it looks like that it'll only be the Thunderous and the Rhyperior making moves here. The Thunder Wave does go into the Protect. And the Earthquake comes in, not going to deal any damage to that Thunderous or the Ludicolo or the Machamp, thanks to those Protects. <laughs> yeah, good plays by both sides there. Uh, I think they both correctly predicted one of the, op the opponent's moves, but not the other. So, uh, you know, the turn's just a wash, which is a win for uh, the Hayden side because he got rid of Fake Out. So. Even though nothing happened there, something did happen because you can only use Fake Out to cause the flinch the first turn you're out, so good turn for him. Yeah, and also very quietly, Thunderous has gotten itself back up to full health thanks to those leftovers. Got a whole banquet next to him. <laughs> Not just leftovers, the whole all-you-can-eat smorgasbord. Uh, but Thunderous now up to just about health, full health against, with this Machamp. And he has three Pokemon, two bins, two. Ludicolo goes for the double protect, but it's not going to work this time. Thunderous still goes for the Thunder Wave, knows that it wants to get that onto the Ludicolo. Is going to paralyze Ludicolo, make its life a little bit more troublesome, as it may not be able to attack at any turn. The Dynamic Punch comes out again onto that Rhyperior, super effective, and is going to cause that confusion status. 
Uh, as opposed to the Swagger, which you've seen a lot of, isn't going to raise its attack, which is great, because you don't want to give Rhyperior more attack. Feels just about half, a little bit under half there, as Rhyperior is confused. And we'll have to see if Rhyperior is going to be able to make an attack here, as we see that it does get the Earthquake off, but because Ludicolo could not protect, it is going to take some damage from this Ground Gym boosted Earthquake a lot more than it wants to. But Machamp is going to also take uh, a whole heap and help him there. But the damage on the Ludicolo probably much more important here, as Machamp should be able to tank that with ease. As we see its health bar falling, good amount of damage, but not enough because of that Citrus Berry just going to heal it right back off. Yeah, from a practical standpoint, it does about the same amount of damage to both Pokemon, but much more meaningful for uh, Ben's side since he only has the two Pokemon remaining. He's got to be really careful with the damage he takes, especially because both of his Pokemon now have a status effect. Uh, Rhyperior is confused, Ludicolo is paralyzed, so he's going to have a hard time even moving from here on out, which makes it even more difficult because this isn't a great matchup to begin with. You know, Ludicolo doesn't really like dealing with Thunderous, and while Machamp did surprisingly little damage to Rhyperior because of its solid rock ability, which reduces the damage of super effective attacks, uh, it's still not a good matchup for it, because without the ground gym, Machamp's going to be able to take one more Earthquake before it faints. Yeah, and because we've already seen that that Machamp is faster, it's going to be two Dynamic Punches to two Earthquakes. Uh, dynamic Punch will win that every time. Yeah, I mean, he's got to hope for a critical hit or a really clever chain of protects here. Uh, but it's not going to be able to get that off, as he, Rhyperior does hit itself in confusion, not able to get the Protect off this time. Hidden Power comes out from Thunderous, is going to try and ensure that KO onto Rhyperior. Uh, going to deal some damage there, make sure that the Dynamic Punch is enough. Super effective, uh, probably Ice-type there. Dynamic Punch does come out onto the Ludicolo, actually, making sure that Ludicolo is both paralyzed and confused which will make its life a lot more difficult, even though it's just barely hanging on with that red sliver of health there. Confused, paralyzed, we've seen a lot of that this weekend. Uh, Ludicolo, not able to make an attack either, is going to hit itself in its confusion and bring itself down to a very low amount of health. Two slower Pokemon against two faster Pokemon. These last two only have a very little bit of health. Uh, looks bad. <laughs> Very bad. Hayden's got to be looking at his chops here. He's got three Pokemon remaining that are all healthy against two Pokemon that are disabled and aren't likely to be able to move. Um, you, you, hard to imagine a better situation here. I mean, unless Machamp's going to you know, evolve into Mewtwo or something, I think he probably likes his odds. <laughs> it's a, a mega evolution to Mewtwo. The uh, hidden power comes out from the Thunderous onto the Rhyperior. is going to get the KO on Rhyperior. And the Dynamic Punch, I assume, is coming out from Machamp as Ry Rhyperior faints on Ben's side. The Dynamic Punch from Machamp does come out, is going to target the Ludicolo, and Hayden McTavish going to get the KO there. Comes all the way back from the last chance qualifier, grinds his way in all the way through to the World Championship Finals and takes the crown. Hayden McTavish is our 2013 Senior World Video Game Champion. Congratulations, Hayden. And just look at him on the stage. It's amazing. Finally takes home the, the crown after an incredible weekend of Pokemon. Now, what an amazing journey. Uh, I think it's really inspirational to come from the LCQ and be able to become the world champion. Now, there's lots of players who come to Worlds every year you know, hoping to be able to achieve that dream, and he's proven that you can do it. You know, it's worth coming to the LCQ. It's worth making the trip to Worlds to try to become the champion. Yeah, I mean, he didn't have his invitation. He just came, and he knew that he could conquer. He got through the LCQ all five or six rounds of that, and then just... Thanks so much, guys. Great to see you again. Now, we have seen some fierce competition throughout this entire tournament, but we have two veritable titans of Pokemon sizing each other up right now who want that world championship more than anything. So, without further ado, our first competitor from Japan, Ryosuke Kosuge! And across that table, representing the nation of Italy, Arash Amadi! He's playing with a Mamoswine, Kakelder, Heatran, Latios, Tornadus, and the Amoongus. And both of these players know exactly what they want to do. We're going right into the game. Ryosuke Kosuge is on the top of your screen, playing for Japan. On the bottom of your screen is Arash Omati from Italy. Let's get into this battle. I am so excited to see this. 
Hoping we see Mammoth Swan again. You know, I think that's uh, Pokemon be a difference maker here, and uh, I think it's a big deal to have that Pokemon that can really mess with your uh, opponent's comfort zones. It's really tough to win if you just can't just fall back into what your team does best or what you're, you know, the most comfortable with. And I think that's a really important way to put, set someone off guard. One yeah. of the things that's helped Ryusuke in this tournament is that he's used his team much more than most of his opponents have used theirs. You know, he's really comfortable with certain things on his team, and he knows exactly how to play them. So forcing him out of that game is an important part of being able to beat him. Yeah, and we see exactly that with the uh, Tornadus and Mamoswine coming out. Bringing that Mamoswine, going to be able to force Ryosuke off his game. The Heatran and Cresselia, new leads that we've seen from him now. Yeah, uh, it's likely he's going to try to uh, activate the Trick Room a little bit sooner this game, even though it didn't work out so well last time. <laughs> uh, so he's going to have to try to find a way to protect it a little better this time. Now make sure that by setting Trick Room, he's helping himself and not his opponent. But uh, he can't... Oh, oh wow. Heatran doesn't go for the Protect, and Mamoswine gets the Earthquake off immediately. Is going to hit that four times weak double super effective attack on that Heatran. The Earthquake is going to hit. It's going to go all the way down, and that's going to be an easy one-hit KO for Arash. One of the highest offensive threats on Ryosuke's team goes down turn one. And Tornadus is going to get the U-turn off on Cresselia as well, giving Arash the chance to decide what he wants to do from here on out and maintain that all-important momentum. Oh my god, it's an incredibly important knockout. Not only does he get the knockout, but he gets a free switch here too, so he can set himself up for uh, basically any situation he thinks is likely to come at him. Uh, I just, I can't... It's really daring of Ryusuke to have chosen to leave Heatran in there. Not necessarily a bad play, even though it didn't work out this time. He's expecting that Arash would anticipate Heatran protecting and double target Cresselia instead, but that's not what he got. And, and that's what happens when you make daring plays like that one. Yeah, and we also see the Trick Room as the Amoongus comes out. That Mushroom has been the bane of many players' existence, and it looks like it will be Ryusuke's bane as well as it comes out on the field. Uh, we've talked a lot about being down. You usually have to play conservatively. Ryosuke decided not to go conserv conservative, did the aggressive play, and Arash had an equally aggressive play right to counter that. Amazing set for, for Arash there, that, last, that first turn. I mean, that's exactly why people normally play you know, more conservatively when they're behind, because if you do take a risk like that and it doesn't work out, you know, it could be your tournament, and he's in a really tough spot now. This game is far from over, uh, especially with you know, Mammoth Swine locked into Earthquake. But, you know, he's getting Moongus out in Trick Room now to deal with. It's a really tough spot for Ryusuke. Yeah, Ryusuke is going to have to really manage his sleep well here. Uh, that's probably the most frustrating thing going against the Moongus. You always get at least one guaranteed turn of no action, and possibly a couple of extra ones. Uh, you see Mammoth Swine is going to switch back because it is locked into that Earthquake. Tornadus comes back out. Uh, not too worried about being under Trick Room, it seems is back out on the field, fresh from its debut in Pokestar Studios. We do get the helping hand coming out from Cresselia onto Conkelder, going to boost the power of Conkelder's attack, but it, will it be able to get an attack off? Amoongus goes for the spore and it hits the Conkelder! Conkelder not going to be able to use that boost and get an, an attack off this turn. Now Ryusuke is probably just hoping for a mistake there. That's the right play to use spore on Conkelder there, but you know, if he had chosen to spore Cresselia instead, the boosted Ice Punch would have either knocked out Amoongus or been very close. So you know, he's hoping to you know, get a chance to come back into the game here. But that's what happens when you fall behind. You, know? you have to hope your opponent gives you some space. And Arash is smart. He's not giving him anything. Yeah, definitely not. And now he has to hope for another quick one-turn wake-up here. Uh, Conkelder did use its first guaranteed sleep that turn. And now Cresselia getting scored, going fast to sleep. Uh, Ryosuke's Pokemon both too tired from this long weekend of Pokemon battle, and Conkelder takes another turn of sleep. Cresselia takes its turn of sleep, and now Tornadus gets to use its fly Flying Gym Acrobatics. Going to be an easy one-shot onto that Conkelder. And things are going real south real fast for Ryosuke. Oh, he's in a really tough spot now. He's got a sleeping support Pokemon now. Uh, he's down 2-4. He's done, I think, literally zero damage. And Amoongus is still out in Trick Room, so whatever comes in is going to have to deal with Spore. It's going to have to deal with both Spore and with Tornadus still being able to get free pot shots off on Cresselia or whatever comes in. And it looks like Ryosuke's last hope rests entirely on this Lander Asterian form. The Intimidate, though, going to lower the attack of the Amoongus. It's going to try to lower the attack of that Tornadus. Um, but... <laughs> Not likely to have too much success with lowering that attack there. Uh, one of the reasons Tornadus is actually good now is Defiant. Yeah, Tornadus Defiant giving it an attack boost, completely negating 
that Intimidate from Landers and making it just even scarier. Yeah, like King Kelder Tornadus is another Pokemon that was basically irrelevant last year. The one thing that made him better is it is Defiant, which re uh, gives it two levels of attack every time its stats are dropped. So it counters Intimidate really well. And Intimidate's a big part of the metagame. Um, a lot of the matches yesterday were coming down to keeping Landorus alive, and you know, Tornadus isn't really countered by that. Yeah, Landorus going for the Protect, trying to make sure that it can survive the spores from Amoongus and hope that Cresselia can wake up and do some damage, but it's not going to happen. Cresselia still fast asleep. Tornadus goes for the U-turn. With that extra boost onto the Cresselia, going to deal even more damage now. Look at how much damage that does with that Defiant boost. Over half to a Cresselia is not something you normally see. It will be able to recover some of that damage off with the Citrus, uh, get it back up to above 50, but still very precarious. Cresselia should be waking up next turn, though. Yeah, Cresselia has been out for a long time here, but I mean, that's the game you play with, with sleep. Sometimes you get uh, short sleeps, like happened last game, and sometimes you get the long ones. Uh, he was able to get through the game when the sleep wasn't really working his way, and now he, you know, he's got a big advantage because it is working his way in the second game, and it's gonna make it even harder to come back from this deficit. And now he gets a free switch. Uh, Arash gets a free switch to Mamoswine, which is going to just make that, uh, make that Landorus quake, <laughs> shiver. It it's kind of removes the option of stalling out that Trick Room, too. Like, normally, you've got Amoongus out there, like, okay, I, you know, I've got, just got to stall a Trick Room, then I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. But now Amo uh, Mammoth Swat's the fastest Pokemon on the field, and it's threatening to knock out Landorus here, so it, suddenly things aren't so safe anymore. And the Spore is connecting with that Landorus. You can see it sleeping. Cresselia does manage to wake up, is going to be able to get the Psychic off onto that Amoongus, uh, which is going to deal some damage, but he needed much more damage on that Amoongus to be more relevant. Almost half damage there but still able to survive at least two, at least one more Psychic there. Uh, Landorus does go to sleep, but the Icicle Spear coming out from Mamoswine going to break that Focus Sash and be an easy one-hit KO on that Landorus. Only Cresselia left. All four, four Pokemon alive on Arash's side. Cresselia against the world. I have never seen a Cresselia come back from this big of a deficit, but it's always possible. See the Twisted Dimensions return to normal, and we are just a few short turns away from having our first Italian and our first European World Champion in Masters. Unless Ryosuke can pull something miraculous off here. Now, it looks like we're going to have a really uh, momentous moment in VGC here. Yeah, we can see the Icicle Spear is going to connect with that Cresselia. How many times will it connect? One, two, a couple more. Two times! <laughs> two times with the Icicle Spear, as the Psychic does come out on Amoongus again, which will probably just score it back to sleep. Make sure that Cresselia does not get a chance to deal any more damage. Does survive with 21 HP. The Spore comes out. Cresselia goes right back to sleep. And we've got just a couple more turns for Arash to whittle away that Cresselia and become the first European, the first Italian world champion. He's playing the end of this game really well, too. He's not taking any risks. You know. He got a big advantage at the very beginning of the game and just slowly making sure he keeps that advantage. He just hasn't let any Pokemon go down that didn't need to and he's showing why he made it to this point and why he's about to become the world champion. Yeah, we mentioned earlier that, you know, uh, because Ryosuke was behind, he had to wait for his opponent to make a mistake. But Arash didn't make a single mistake this entire game. Gets the critical hit even and with just a couple more Icicle Spears is not quite going to be able to KO the Cresselia with the Icicle Spears. But Amoongus is just sitting in the wings, waiting to Giga Drain. That last little bit of damage is going to KO the Cresselia. And Arash Omati is our first Italian world champion here at the 2013 Pokemon World Video Game Championship. Congratulations, Amati. Oh, what a flawlessly played series. Both games, every turn, he did exactly what he needed to do. He led the right Pokemon, he U-turned to the right Pokemon, he used the right attacks.